Vocês estão vendo essa casa aqui atrás de mim? Atrás da porta daquela garagem tem um negócio muito especial e inacreditável. Nessa casa está a maior coleção de laser discs do mundo e fica na garagem da casa de um senhor extremamente simpático chamado Chuck Legg, que eu conheci numa das feiras de retro games que eu fui e ele gentilmente me convidou para vir conhecer o espaço dele. Não é só a coleção dele que está aqui, ele vende tudo que está aqui, ele tem uma loja bem interessante na internet, um site bem old school, mas ele vende absolutamente tudo que está aqui. Eu estou extremamente empolgado para conhecer esse lugar e para poder mostrar para vocês. Beleza? Vamos lá então! E esse vídeo é patrocinado pela Mr. Games, uma loja incrível de videogames do meu amigo Gilão. O lugar é um verdadeiro paraíso para quem curte retro games, com uma seleção de jogos e consoles dos mais clássicos até os mais raros. A loja fica na cidade de Piracicaba, no estado de São Paulo, na Avenida Independência número 216. E eles estão no Instagram como arroba MrGamesPira e eles fazem live de vendas todas as quintas-feiras às 19 horas na Twitch e no Facebook. Bom, o Chuck tem um bom gosto para carro, né? Esse Corvette aqui já chamou muito a atenção, mas dá para ver o quanto ele é fissurado pelos laser discs, que olha a placa do carro dele, desse Lincoln que ele tem. Já mostra que o cara realmente, que a paixão da vida dele é isso daqui. Mas agora vamos lá, eu vou que nem a porta da esperança do Silvio Santos, eu vou pedir para ele abrir essa porta que está aqui e vocês vão ver o que, que tem aqui dentro. Cara, olha aqui aqueles momentos de extrema empolgação né, de ver isso daqui abrindo. Olha que espaço incrível! E aqui lá dentro é um verdadeiro labirinto. Ele tem 18 mil discos catalogados e a gente vai conhecer, eu vou bater um papo com ele, ele vai contar toda a experiência dele. Mas olha que incrível, aquelas coisas que só nos Estados Unidos que a gente acha, né? Na garagem da casa dele, ele tem esse espaço fantástico recheado de laser discs e vai ter muita, muita história legal para conversar com ele, afinal ele é um cara muito bom de papo e história legal para eu contar para vocês. Só que eu não vou começar a visita pela garagem porque tem muita coisa interessante dentro da casa dele. Ele acabou de comprar uma coleção com 2.500 filmes, então tem muita coisa aqui que ele ainda está processando, que ele ainda vai organizar, mas ele vai me mostrar cada cantinho aqui da, do que ele tem e é uma experiência incrível. Então vamos lá! Vou entrar na casa dele, né? como a educação manda, vou tocar a campainha. Vamos ver aqui se ele, a hora que ele vai abrir e vocês vão finalmente conhecer o Chuck. Hey Greetings. Chuck! How are you, Louis? Hey, I'm good, and you? Good to see you. Okay, can I come in? Absolutely. All right, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And I'm so excited when I met you in the Retro Game Expo that you told me about your place. I said, okay, this is the kind of thing that I love. I know that my audience loves it as well. And you told me that you have the largest, la largest laser disc collection. In the world. In the world. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, I'll have the pleasure to, <laughs> to show to my audience this fantastic uh, place. And of course, the largest laser disc collection is not something that you see every day. So thank you again. You, you are the expert here, so you run the show. Uh, okay. I would love you to like present your place. To, but the first things first, right? Quick introduction. Who are Chuck Legg? Chuck Legg. I uh, live in Tigard, Oregon, and been doing this now for 43 years. 43 years. 1980 is when I started. Oh, that's a long time, man. It's a long journey. Yeah. And you are known here in the area as the king of the, the laser. King of laser discs. The yeah. So yeah. if you go to Google and you type in the words "king of laser discs," you can read an article about my exploits in laser discs. Okay, I'll make sure to put all the links and the information about you, about your place. And on top of being a collector, you also sell the laser discs, right? Yes. So, yes. yeah. And how, how do you sell it? Do you have a website, correct? Um, we have a website that uh, if anybody out there uh, updates websites and needs to update, it's really old. Um, but the um, to sell laser discs, we sell on LaserDisc database, LDDB.com. Yeah. And we're the largest dealer there and I believe there's 400 dealers worldwide. And you told me that here in this space there are some cool stuff that you want to show, right? We're going yeah, to right? start from the beginning. Yeah. Um, one of the first discs that was ever produced, um, 1977 was when laser discs actually hit the shores of America. Um, the first city that was test marketed was Atlanta, Georgia. And they had a, a line running around the building to get in to get the players on a Monday. And the line was back on Tuesday 
because the players didn't work. Their uh, Magnavox players was the first player. Magnavox. Um, that was the Philips version yeah. in, uh, in America since Philips didn't sell product uh, in America at that time. Philips and uh, IBM were kind of partners in the development of the LaserDisc and it wasn't marketed as LaserDisc then, it was called DiscoVision. 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 One of the first, first discs that, that came out, something that's never been reissued on any format that I know of, was the uh, $6 million man. It was a TV, TV series, yeah. uh, Lee Majors. Uh, it was a knockoff um, with Farrah Fawcett, I believe. Yeah. It was her husband. The Bionic Woman, the $6 million man. It was not, it was Lindsay Wagner. Yeah, and you know, uh, Curiosity, this series was super popular in Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, I well, remember my childhood, I, was, I watched it a lot, this one. DiscoVision put out about eh, 100, 150 titles in the beginning. Uh, the quality, to be honest, was not very good. Uh, you could get, some of them were okay, but it's a pretty high defect rate. They're collectible, but sometimes it takes several copies of a movie um, to put sides together to make a complete copy that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Anyway, DiscoVision. You, you told me something interesting about the cover, right? The, the covers for DiscoVision was a generic cover that was silver, and then uh, they would paste over what the title was going to be, so they didn't make extra covers. They just paste what they needed, and then use the next cover, you know, the same blank for the next movie. Yeah. Um, they had several different size boxes. Some discs were one disc, some were two, some were three, and so there was basically three different covers they made, but they all had the same thing where they would just paste over the title on the generic cover. Now we'll go to the other spectrum of laser discs. The first time I saw this was in the mid 90s at Consumer Electronics Show. And it was the first high definition home system to be shown. And um, it was very, very cool. And I asked the pioneer rep, I said, well, when will we be coming to America? And he smiled and he says, it, it's, it's just not. So anyway, uh, recently I had a person from Seattle call me and he had a big collection that he wanted to sell. And it just so happened that he imported probably the most definitive LaserDisc player ever made. Oh my it God. Was, uh, called the X Zero for short. And that's right here. Is this beauty that, here? That, that is the player, that's a high def player. It's a monster, it weighs a little bit north of 80 pounds. Uh, to play it in America, um, you need a step down transformer because Japan uses different power than we do in America. Ah, it's from Japan, so yeah. And then there's also to decode the high definition signal there's what's known as a Muse decoder, and without that, all you can do is just play the normal laser disc. Wow, well, first time that I, I've seen it, and it looks amazing. It's a beast, right? Like the size. A, the next thing for the gamers there was laser disc video games, and the, the Pioneer player. Um, it was known as a laser active player, and what made it a laser active player is it had packs that you could put into the player. Which is this and, one, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, you could play uh, Sega Genesis. Um, Sega also had what was known as LD-ROM discs. And then uh, NEC. The PC Engine, Turbo Graphics. PC, PC Engine, it, yeah. it played the Turbo Graphics. The discs are kind of hard to find nowadays. I have a few of them. Um, I think all I have is... Power oh, got, Patrol. Uh, that's a Sega. Yeah. Uh, Hyperion. That's, look at that sample, still sealed. Yeah, wow. Um, high Roller Battle, and then this here is, is uh, LD-ROM, so that would be for the NEC system. The system really wasn't very successful because it was just too much money. Yeah, yeah. And um, the games were, they were okay, but they're really nothing special. Yeah, the graphics are good. While we are talking, I will put like a B-roll just to show people the graphic because it's interesting to see, but it's interesting also because we had some arcades with laser disc back yes. in the 80s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of, none of those arcade games ever got ported over to the laser active, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And you have a this, beautiful this, thing here. This here was for dealers and it's the only one I've ever seen. Uh, it was for a display in your store. And um, the same person that I got that uh, high def player from, he had that. And since he got all his laser discs, he said he didn't have any need for it. So he says, please take it. Really Which nice I, prop. I, and uh, it's, it's nice to see that they are explaining people, right? The This was a point of sale, you know, trying yeah. to get people interested. Deliver 6% um, greater video resolution from VHS tapes. Yeah. 
Is this correct in your perception? Is oh yeah, yeah. video tape was 240 lines, and we could get about 420. Okay. Laser disc. So this is precise what they are saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's true. Then something else like you'll probably never see. There is Ooh. the high vision disc. I have two boxes full of the of the discs. Well, they're ungodly expensive, but they're very cool. Very cool. Just out of curiosity, if you have in top of your mind, how much is this one? You know? I think the the three discs, the one, two, and three is about a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. Yes. Oof. Go into the office. Let's go to your office. This place. It's mind-blowing. I saw some stuff there, the zombie one. It's a box, right? Yes. I think there's two movies in, in that. That Ocean's Eleven was the original 1960s version, which all of the major stars are no longer with us. But Angie Dickinson was nice enough to sign that to me. Oh, you have it signed. And I see also here... Uh, a, yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I mean, you know. Somebody signed it, but I don't know who it is. He's fairly talented in his scribbling. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, if you go pan to the right, the Pokemon movie. The Pokemon movie. Yeah. Only available over in Japan. Never came to America. I've never seen this one as well. So a lot of oddities and nice stuff in this yeah. shelf here. That Snow White box looks beautiful. Yeah. That, that's It's uh, two discs for the movie and then an extra disc of uh, extras and you know, production stuff. There may be uh, things that didn't quite make the movie. Uh, right next to uh, Snow White is uh, assigned uh, by, the, I believe, the director of They Shoot Horses, don't they? Yeah. The Phantasm is also signed. Yeah. Flash Guard on the TV series. Or yeah, that, that's black, whole black and white. Those from the, like 40s and 50s. Wow. And then the zombie, the done off the dead. Cool. After seeing this fantastic space and like the largest collection, how everything started? So how your like your passion for LaserDisc and this collection started? Well, um, back in 1980 is when I started at the post office, and there was a distributor of LaserDisc on one of the routes, and I went in there and, and helped him out with uh, his um, mailing, and he said, "Well, for." For doing that and mentioned that you were into laser disc and I said yes and he says well if you'd like to buy your disc from us I would be happy to sell you them for what for the help that you've given us so that's that's how it started it was uh, one of the other carriers at the post office and myself and then um, a guy from the newspaper found out about me and then another guy from the Seattle newspaper was trying to decide whether he wanted to come to Portland or stay up in Seattle and he decided that since he could get his laser disc for wholesale, that he was coming to Portland. And unfortunately, he's passed by now, but uh, he was the one who wrote my newsletter back in the 90s. And um, he was a great guy, very talented. Not only did he write for the newspaper, he wrote for, for Time magazines. The people that got it really looked forward to, to, to seeing the newsletter when it would come out. And I should have kept some. I think I might have some of them, but I... I don't have all of them anymore. It's interesting. And do, do you remember the first time that you saw a laser disc? And I'm asking because I remember the first time that I saw and my reaction was so, wow, this is future. Like to see like a vinyl size disc laser was, it blew my mind. But what about you? I, I don't remember the first time. What I do remember back in 8081 very minimal studios were supporting laser disc mca some of the columbia it turned out it was rca columbia studios but i remember going on a friday afternoon to the distributor and they opened up the box and here was six mgm titles i remember there's a wizard of oz and there was dr zhivago and ben hur and there were a couple others like i say there were six and i thought we've made it we finally are getting MGM titles. Yeah. Mag Video had some stuff. Mag Video turns into be CBS Fox. Uh, Mag Video, 20th Century Fox, CBS Fox. Most of the Laserdisc people didn't have a lot of affection for them because they seemed to charge extra for their Laserdisc. Disney actually had uh, a couple of uh, DiscoVision titles for the beginning launch of Laserdisc. Nothing spectacular. It was mostly. Uh, things that have been on the wonderful world of Disney TV show, Mickey Mouse cartoons, and the like. And, and 
like among many different types of media, like movie medias, why LaserDisc is the one that got you? Good question. I don't know. LaserDisc kind of have a, a charismatic attraction to me because you can hold it in your hand and you can look at the jacket and it, it's tangible instead of yeah. streaming. I just, I don't care much for streaming. I want to, I want to own it, to be honest. And I like to read the, the back of the cover and collect it because I'm a collector of, of stuff. I identify myself with this, with this. And yeah, so as, as you said that you're a collector of stuff, I, I'm seeing your laser disc collection, but what else do you collect? What are the other things that you like? Well, um, did we mention the, the article in the newspaper? Yeah. We, we did that. I wish I could be the, the king of Lionel trains, which were electric trains. They still make them today, but the original company went out of business uh, late 60s. Mm -hmm. And they've reissued some of the stuff. It was, at first, it was pretty poor. The, the stuff nowadays is, is, is pretty good. It's, it's, it's nice, but it's really gotten pretty expensive. and um, It's kind of priced itself out of what you know, a retired person yeah. can, can afford to play with. I like to collect um, Lee Max little houses for Halloween and for Christmas and um, high res audio. I, I, uh, I like collecting really good sounding super audio CDs, DVD audios or Blu-ray pure audios. Oh, that's cool. That, I think this is a topic that we, I can, I can come back one day just to talk about this we're, one. I, if, if this one goes over well, we're gonna, yeah. I think we're gonna do one on high res audio and the titles and, and of course, like everything in electronics, uh, we can't just have one system. We always have to have competing systems to confuse people. And yeah. hopefully, but the, if we do the video, make it so you'll understand everything. Talking about going back to the movies, uh, I, what I've seen here, you have pretty much all the genres of movie, right? All the styles. But there, is there one that is like your favorite one? What kind of movie do you like? Oh, wow. I, I think it would boil down to the ones with the really good sound because the picture quality is, you know, is good. But sound and really good sound, surround sound, can really make or break a movie. It can get you to suck you in. Mm -hmm. And so there's um, there are special discs. Um, once again, we have to have two competing systems. We have the Dolby Digital AC3 titles and we have the DTS titles. And the DTS titles, there's much fewer of them than there were of the, of the Dolby titles, but every one of the 116 were really good. Some were just beyond really good. They were just yeah. tr totally outstanding. And so uh, any of the DTS things are, are the things that kind of excite me. Okay, good, nice, good to know. Mm -hmm. And we were talking there before about the history of LaserDisc, right? why, why this format came and why it, it failed, because I think some people consider that the, the LaserDisc was a failure, right? Can you, can you explain yeah. more and tell yeah. us more about it? The concept of the LaserDisc was never, it was supposed to be a product that was sold. It couldn't record back in the day and they thought people would be interested in buying movies, but it's pretty tough to compete buying movies when you can put a tape in there and yeah. tape, uh, you know, whatever movie to watch at a, a future date. I bet the, the quality wasn't nearly as good, but when it comes down to, I can tape it for free or I have to pay for it, free usually wins. So some people who are, you know, really gung-ho by those days standards of, of 425 lines of resolution thought laser disc was you know was as good as it could get and of course we find out that you know high definition was you know 10 years away and um, that was part of the downfall of laser disc uh, the real downfall in, in my opinion was movie studios owned record labels and record labels had cd pressing plants and other than sony None of the studios had laser disc per pressing plants and they had to pay about $10 a disc to have them pressed. And then they figured out that a CD plant could press a DVD for pennies. And all of a sudden, the studios start thinking, why are we paying you know this much on laser disc and not making a very good margin when we can go to, to DVD hmm. and um, less shipping is less cost. And, and uh, by 2000, the writing was on the wall by 2001 yeah. we'd seen our last laser disc what's the last one um the last english speaking movie that i know that was pressed it was over in japan was jennifer lopez in the cell ah. um extremely hard to find 
extremely expensive to buy. I don't remember the last American one. I know that The Legend of Sleepy Hollow was near the end. I, I know I have one of those. I don't remember the other title that came out at the same time. I think they were Paramount titles that um, when Laserdisc was kind of shrinking, they didn't want to mess with the uh, doing the Laserdisc, so they just licensed them either to Pioneer or to Image, and they took care of them, and then they just sent them a check for what they made, and it was just gravy for them, and yeah. no problems. And, and why Pioneer became a reference in Laserdisc? Pioneer uh, came on board 79 or 80 in that uh, time frame, and basically, I think everybody would agree who was then in Laserdisc. If Pioneer didn't come along, Laserdisc would have died mm -hmm. back then. They came in, and, and they had a player that was considerably better than the Magnavox player. They started pressing the discs and got away from uh, the Disco Vision stuff, and um, they they saved the format. So they they really played a critical role to very correct. I mean, yeah. like no Pioneer, no, no laser disc, no laser disc. No and why Japan? Why laser discs were, were so popular in Japan? Um, I think it's because of quality. The, the Japanese people are really quality conscious people, and they'll pay for quality. And, and so it's a big deal to them. And, and you can play um, Japanese discs on American players. And a lot of people like the artwork on, yeah. the, on the covers of the Japanese discs. But you have to put up with subtitles because most of the time they're in English. And um, Japanese subtitles would be on the bottom. Chuck, I want to know more about you and the movies that you like. So if you need to take five movies with you to a desert island just to spend your time with quality, what would be your top five favorite movies ever? I don't know if I can get it to five, yeah. but I'm going to go with the first disc I ever bought. Interesting. One of George Lucas's first films, American Graffiti. I don't know how many times it's been reissued on different versions, but I still love it with the Wolfman. Second... We're gonna go with Top Gun. Top Gun. It's a, it's a THX certified. It's got an incredible soundtrack and um, I put it on way too often. A title that I have looked for for a long, long time and I finally found it. Not a very well-known movie. It was something near the end of Laserdisc. Um, some people call it 54. It can be known as Studio 54. But it's got Nev Campbell in it, and she's just, just beautiful in it. And it's just not fair. If you're watching Nev, if you come to Portland, please sign my copy for me. Mm -hmm. And then I want to do my three favorite DTS titles. These are reference level. You'll hear things in them that you never heard before. They're incredible. Great Christmas movie, Die Hard. Die Hard. I love it. It's... Um, reference quality. There's two DTS James Bond movies. I think GoldenEye is the better of the two. It's um, for DTS. It's um, it's DTS. It's, it's it's really good. There's a Dolby Digital movie. I have a box full of those, but maybe one or two DTS copies. And then the first movie that was done in DTS, uh, Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park, still looks good after 30 years. Yeah. Still sounds good after 30 years. And then for my Desert Island disc that I don't want to admit to, but I will. Michelle Pfeiffer in Grease 2. Everybody panned the thing. I love the movie. It's got a great soundtrack. It's got the four tops. She she disowns the movie. She doesn't, she won't show up. I don't think she'll sign anything, but if you come to Portland, please come sign my copy for me. <laughs> I love your list and it was a surprise for me. Like a lot of titles that you said are would be part of my Maybe my top 20 list. Yeah. yeah. So Top Gun for me was a nice surprise. Jurassic Park as well. And yeah. I saw some Jurassic Park discs. Uh, there's three different versions yeah. they've put out of Jurassic Park. Actually, there's four. There was the standard version. There was a CAV box set. It had no extra stuff on it. There was an AC3 version of it. And then there's the DTS version, which is by far my favorite. The best one. All right, good to know. I, I love your list. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> yeah, let's throw one more in. Let's put a music title in. This was an interesting title. There's not very many DTS uh, music titles, but uh, The Eagles' Hell Freezes Over is 
really, really good. It's, it's really, really clear. Do you have it here? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to think about something that you don't have here, right? So do you have a list of like sought after discs that you still don't have? There was over 20,000 laser disc released in America. Okay. And no, I do not have everything that was ever made. So the way I look at people's collections they want to sell me, I'm not looking at what they have in total. I look at how many do they have that I don't have. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain titles that we call the commons that yeah. everybody has. And so they're, they don't have much value because everybody already has them. So the things that, that um, people get excited over, horror always sells. Japan imports, people like those. Music does okay. And then we have the both ends of the spectrum, the animation stuff and then the adult stuff. It's always interesting if people come over and, and if they have an adult title, it's never on the top of the pile. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's kind of it, hidden. It's somewhere. in the middle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it is here, but it's, it's hidden somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. it's, you know, we have grandkids, and so yeah, yeah. they're here, but they're put away. Okay. <laughs> okay, you told me that you have something special to show? This is about as rare as they come. This was uh, near the end of the production. They made one run of them. And that one was it. run. One run. One run you mean? How many units or just one? Whatever. Um, back in the old days, um, the dealers would order titles and they would make extra titles. But at the end, they didn't want to get stuck with extra titles. So if yeah. they had 1,500, they'd maybe make an extra 50 copies. And they wanted to make sure they were going to sell through so there wouldn't be anything they have to try to get rid of. Wow. This was so this is one of the rarest that you have this here? Is, this is rare. Selling this one? <laughs> you got the money, you can own it. <laughs> I don't want to even ask how much is it. <laughs> do, um, do you know, top of your mind, how much is it? 600. 600? 600 dollars. Well, can I see the back? Sure. Beautiful, and the movies. It's one of the really good discs. They never did a DTS of it, it's just an AC3, but it, it was, it's, a, it's a very good deal. Amazing, fantastic. So Chuck, now we start here the journey well, the journey we're going to start with uh, a lot of people's favorite was the Criterion Collection. Criterion uh, Collection. Criterion was a, a company that licensed uh, movies from studios and tried to do something special with it, whether it may maybe be uh, outtakes or bonus footage or interviews with people, different endings. Uh, anyway, um, they made about th a little over 300 titles in their life. One of the more interesting stories is uh, they asked Barbara Streisand to do a movie and they ended up doing The Prince of Tides. And um, they did it and they gave her a copy to review. And she said, um, you did a nice job. But when the final, when you do it, you know, press them for real, I would like the soundtrack, the, vo the vocals raised three decibels. And they said, but they're already done. And she says, well, I guess you're going to have to do them over again. And so they could never release it. And I have heard that they had pressed over 2,000 copies that they uh, had to dump. And wow. They ended up redoing it, but they changed the cover. And So it's a very exclusive item to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's rumors that yeah. a couple of them got out, but um, I can't confirm or deny that. I, this is this is new for me. I didn't know about this. Yeah. Criteria. Anyway, the, the, all, all of these, these on this side of the wall, these are all... Um, uh, used uh, Criterion titles. Um, these here, uh, these two rows, um, these are all still uh, s sealed. They've never been opened yet. Sealed. So I see some, let's say, popular titles here like Armageddon, right? Yeah, that was um, near the end. I think Armageddon might have been their last title that they did before uh, they moved on to DVDs and Blu-rays. Cool. The Jurassic Park that you said, but this is not the DTS, right? No, this is, no, I'm out yeah. of DTS. I just saw a person up in Canada bought the last one I had. This is kind of an interesting title, if you can get it out. Um, the Day the Earth Stood Still. Um, it's a classic. Yeah, that's pretty cool that Robert Wise, the director, signed them. Beautiful cover. 2,500 he signed. That's so cool. So, Chuck, you told me that this whole shelf here is sealed? These are all sealed titles that have never had the shrink wrap broken, never been watched. 
that um, it starts up there with L's and this goes to uh, P's and this is S's. It's a lot of stuff. Like all different yeah, there, styles and... One, one copy of each movie. That's Do you, you know how many do you have here? No. No? I would say hundreds, right? Um, the last time I looked, I think that I had about 15 to 1600 sealed individual titles in stock. Sure. That's amazing. Fantastic. I can spend days here just browsing those items. Oof. And I see you have more Batmans over there. Lots of Batmans. Never going to run out. It's, are they popular? They sell okay, but you know, everybody bought them, so everybody, you get one when you buy the collection, so. Yeah. There's... So, Chuck, here you have, starting here, right? Um, and yes. going down, the... Japanese titles. Japanese, yeah, Japanese importer titles. And I found something here that is, I think for my subscribers, they will love it, because you have some video game related stuff. I saw here a, a Street Fighter 2. Let me. So what are these? Like is they are are they animations? Yes. They're they're not laser disc games. They're it's the they're disc of the game. Oh, that's so cool. Look this cover. Oh my god. And how did you get those these things here? They these they beauties. Um that was a collection I got from California. From California. Um, I'm not sure how the guy got him, you know, but he got in contact with me. I, I, I hate to say it, but I think the person passed and he took what he wanted and he says, you know, you can, you can buy these. I love the covers and it, it's a misco for like Japanese animations with some video game animations, right? Yeah, there, there was like, there was Sega, I had Sega Board Outrun. Heroes. And um, there was three, or, I had a, I think it was an NEC disc. There was several of them that when I took them to the retro game show, they lasted like not very long. I can imagine. They are so difficult to find. Is it first? Well, I saw in the retro game expo some of them, but uh, it was the first time. I was not, not even aware that they made animation. Of, well, the, the one thing that's really nice about that this collection is the quality of the jackets. They were, they were really taken well care of. Yeah. And so. Great stuff. I love it. Well, Chuck, it's impossible to come to a place like this and go out with empty hands. So I have my pickups here. I want to show what I found. This Poltergeist box. Amazing. This one is a gift. Gift. He was so kind and he gave me this one as a gift so we'll have a special place in my small laser disc collection this is a classic i love this movie and i don't have this one this is another movie that made my childhood the escape from new york i love this one as well this is maybe my top 10 movies ever the running man richard dawson yeah fantastic one and that was my like the cherry and the pie, like the zombie down of the dead, this collection. I love this movie as well. So these are my pickups. I'm so, I could not be happier than the moment that I had with you here. I like happy people. <laughs> Chuck, I had a fantastic time here. Thank you. I don't know how to thank you. You gave me hours of her Sunday to stay here with you, filming this amazing place. So really, thank you. You're welcome. We'll yeah. have to do it again. Yes, let's do it again. A yeah. lot of stuff here to explore. We won't run out of stuff for a while. I think we cover, what, 10% of what you have? Maybe. Maybe, Maybe. yeah. Maybe. All right. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And thank you. see you next time. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye. Falou, pessoal. Até mais.